The Museum of Discovery and Science is proud to bring you Wise Bodies, an innovative HIV AIDS awareness and prevention program presented by AIDS Healthcare Foundation. So let's say you've fallen in love. Your new partner discloses that they're HIV positive. Would you continue to date them? That's actually a hard question. <laughs> Honestly? Yes. Um, but I think we would have to take like some like precautions during sex or maybe not have sex. I am aware that there are treatments um, that can get the risk next to none uh, as far as transfer goes. So if it was worth it, I would want to try to figure it out. So first, I would say that thank the person for being honest with you because for a lot of people it is not easy to share their status with you. So thank them for being open and honest and communicating with that from you. From that point, it is obviously your decision whether you'd like to move on, but there is absolutely nothing wrong with dating someone who is HIV positive. And if that person is on medication and if you are on PrEP, which is pre-exposure prophylaxis, and you are using condoms, then it really can't be transmitted to you. You can get it from sexual relationships and um, any open sores, blood. Through uh, needles. Through breast milk. I know it's a sexually transmitted disease, that's pretty much, yeah. HIV is, is only transmitted through blood products, right? So sharing blood, either through sharing your needle or um, blood transfusions, those have to have happened in the 80s for, for it to be an issue. Through sexual behaviors, so the exchange of sexual fluids, whether it's oral sex, vaginal sex, or anal sex, it's just the exchange of fluids. Breast milk is another fluid that's exchanged and can um, lead to HIV transmission. Viruses are non-living microscopic parasites that can infect an organism by attaching to cells in the body. But not all viruses infiltrate the body the same way. Some viruses, like the flu or COVID-19, are spread through respiratory droplets, while others, like Zika, can be spread through mosquito bites. Viruses like HPV, herpes, and HIV are primarily spread through sexual activity. The most common way children get HIV is in adolescence through sexual experimentation. When they start um, experimenting with relationships and sexual activity, um, they're actually acquiring HIV at really high rates. We demonstrate how viruses spread through a community by giving each student a cup of a mystery fluid. To let you in on the mystery ahead of time, we filled each cup with water. In one of the cups, we added some vinegar. We then let each student exchange fluids with about three to five of their peers. <laughs> and at the end, we went around and put a pH indicator called phenol red in each of the cups. Phenol red stays a neutral red when mixed with water. When it interacts with an acid, like vinegar, it turns yellow. This allows us to see how many of the cups were infected with the vinegar just by community spread as the students exchanged fluids with a few of their peers. Students can then trace back their steps to see if they can figure out who is patient zero, the original holder of the vinegar cup. Six out of the nine students tested positive for vinegar. People between the ages of 13 and 24 are the least likely to be aware of their HIV infection compared to any other age group. It's important to get tested and know your HIV status. So I'm wondering what is risky behavior? <laughs> What is risky behavior? Risky behavior is behaviors that put you at risk of acquiring HIV. Sex in any orifice, okay? So sex in your mouth, sex in your vagina, sex in your anus, any type of those um, can, can have you uh, acquire HIV. Can you get HIV from kissing? Simply making out is really, there's no chance of transmission, unless there's a rare, rare, rare case that they have a cut in their mouth and you have a cut in your mouth and therefore there is blood, which is a bodily fluid that can be exchanged. But other than that, there's really no need to worry about it for a kiss. From 
saliva, you're not gonna get it. You can only get it from blood or sexual fluids. So that means you can share forks, spoons, knives, you can drink out of somebody's cup. You can get other things, okay? So be careful drinking out of people's cups, but um, you won't get HIV. So we know that it's transmitted through sex and through blood. Is there any other way that it's transmitted, like through the air? There are myths, though, that people believe, right? Um, and so I want to clarify some of those myths. You cannot get HIV from mosquitoes. I bet you one of you can answer why, right? It's human immunodeficiency virus. It does not infect mosquitoes because they're not human. Your HIV positive friend wants to go to the gym to work out with you. Should you go? Yeah, so you can join them. I wouldn't believe that I would be able to catch HIV from just using shared equipment like that. There is nothing wrong with joining your friend at the gym if they're HIV positive. We have to remember that HIV is spread through bodily fluids. There's no exchange of blood, there's no exchange of semen, there's no exchange of breast milk. There's absolutely nothing wrong with going to the gym and hanging out with your friend and getting a few workouts in. So imagine you're at a party and someone's giving stick and poke tattoos. You can't really see what's going on behind the scenes as far as sanitation goes and the needles, but you see people getting the tattoos and they look pretty cool. Should you get one? One, because I personally don't like needles. <laughs> and two, I don't know where that needle has been, so I wouldn't do that. There's a chance that they're, they might be sharing a needle, like using the same needle for every person, and that is a huge HIV infection risk. I would definitely not get the, the stick and poke tattoos. If you're at a party and there are sick and poke tattoos going on, which means there's an actual needle going on, you don't see any sanitation, he's using the same needle for everyone, then no, you should not get a tattoo. Needle sharing is actually a very common way for HIV and other things to be transmitted to each other because the blood on the needles is being transferred to everyone that is using those needles. So no, no needle sharing whatsoever, even if it's for a cute tattoo. The moment really feels right, but you forgot your condoms. Should you have sex anyways? No. Mm -mm. No, I, no, I wouldn't have sex without condoms. Like, I, I wouldn't be comfortable necessarily with it, you know? In the heat of the moment, it's always important, even if you don't have a condom, it is better to risk the moment than take a chance and risk the consequences that can come if you're not careful. I have tested people that have had multiple partners, and I've tested people that have only had one partner. And with the one partner, they were not protected, and the, the one partner is what tripped them up, is what caused them to get a reactive test, test positive. So it can seem like you don't want to mess up the moment, everything is going good, you really like this person, but it's much better to be safe because it really only takes the one moment, the one person. So anytime, even if the mood is right, everything worked, they're super cute, you really like them, it's just better to stop and think and use your protection so that you don't have to face the consequences that come if you don't do that. South Florida, has one of the highest rates of HIV infection in the entire country. It really is our hope that the Wise Bodies program plays a role in decreasing that rate of HIV infection in South Florida and hopefully throughout the United States.